Let me switch gears because I want to ask you about your father and his legacy. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, uh, such a great man, an icon, arguably the most important voice on the most important institution uh, on, on the bench. Talk to us about his legacy this morning. Uh, you know, uh, for me, it's it's so broad, it's hard to capture, and I always uh, remind people that uh, he had this great legacy as a as a jurist, but but um, was the father. Uh, father of nine, and um, you know dozens of uh, grandchildren as well, and and our uh, wonderful uh, the husband to our wonderful mother. Um, his legacy as a jurist, uh, he, he was somebody who was very uh, thoughtful about the role of the courts in our country, who uh, focused on that at a time that I think a lot of people were also concerned about what some have called the imperial judiciary. And he had a way with words and uh, w w was uh, wonderful in articulating for himself, his colleagues, and I think for a lot of other Americans, uh, a view about how, how courts should function that I think is a view that will uh, be with us for a long time. Absolutely. He set the tone, really. He did. And, and, and which is why this, this contested situation around replacing him has really uh, spiked. Uh, we're, we're looking at, at pictures of the great uh, Justice Scalia right now. W what's your take on this battle over replacing him with SCOTUS nominee Merrick Garland? Now, I remember an interview that I saw your father give uh, a couple of years ago, and he said, you know, uh, if, if you ever replace me on the court, I, I don't think I have to tell you that, of course, I would want to be replaced with someone who will not undo everything I've put in place and who have similar uh, thoughts on things as I do. Would would you say Merrick Garland is that person? Uh, you know, Maria, um, when my father died, I uh, thought about this and decided that uh, Supreme Court justices don't expect their uh, kids to be out there talking about uh, Supreme Court nominees, and I, I decided it was best that I uh, uh, continue to honor that now uh, as my father's, uh, father's seat is debated. So this is uh, obviously a very important debate, but one that I, I concluded uh, uh, at the time of his death, it's best that I sit out. I understand. You, you, don't, you don't want to go there, Gene. But your, your, your father had such an incredible legacy and such an incredible um, impact uh, on the country. It's just, uh, it, it's just a real honor to have known him and to talk with you about it. Gene, you're also making a real impact, uh, certainly with this financial services move and uh, the work that you've put into the MetLife uh, court ruling here. What's next in terms of broad industry changes? Do you think with the presidential election we will see a rethinking of the financial landscape when it comes to regulation? I, I think it's natural for uh, a new administration to take a closer look. Uh, re regulatory uh, policy tends to function a bit like a pendulum. Certainly there's been a move toward uh, very uh, aggressive uh, oversight. I think with these designations, as you've been pointing out, Maria, you, we've seen some of the real uh, serious adverse effects uh, for important companies. Uh, but I think uh, the future here, uh, like so many uh, other things, really hangs in the balance of the election. And uh, I, I think uh, whether we have a Republican or Democrat is going to be the biggest determinant uh, of, of, of where we go next. Yeah, for sure. Gene, good to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you. Gene Scalia joining us there, the attorney at MetLife. We'll see you soon, sir. Please join us once again. If